on Score North and scorenorth.com. Uh, Kirk Cousins obviously was not out at the walkthrough today. Um, I have not gotten much of an update, but I do know he was not feeling well earlier. We have a process in place where we send him home and we'll go through our processes internally. I'll, I'll get an update for you guys um, uh, you know, as the, as the kind of week pans out on his avail- availability uh, for the Raider game. I'll give Kevin O'Connell credit, boys. He has become a master of sort of manipulating a narrative or a situation how he wants to the media, right? He's become brilliant at, listen, uh, just kind of gathering the information. We go through a process. Bill Belichick is doing this with his offensive play callers now. Oh. Bill, who's calling the plays? We're going through a process. Yeah. yeah. Matt Patricia's calling the plays. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, this is Purple Daily, where we spread the play calling duty around the room here. Presented by our friends at TCL. No matter what you watch, TCL has award winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. And TCL makes more than just TVs, they offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. It's time for another edition of Judd's Camp Notes here on this Friday. You continue to grind. You continue to properly apply your SPF 6000. Yes. And uh, you have done a great job filling your college rule notebook on a daily basis for us. And so let's dive in. Another round of Judd's Camp Notes here on Purple Daily. All right, let's see where we're going to start. I'm going to pull out the old reporter's notebook and see where we should start. Oh, with Kirk Cousins. Um, So this is what we know as of right now. And we we are recording this around 8 a.m. Central Time on Friday. Uh, I believe if things continue to trend the way that they were yesterday with the expectation, I believe at some point late this morning, we are going to find out that Kirk does in fact have COVID. That that was, I think, the fear. Uh, they, they, for understandable reasons, don't want to just come out and say that until they're absolutely sure. Uh, but I think that was what they, what they thought. Now, what does that mean now? That means... Because in March, um, almost all of the league's coronavirus policies were just basically shelved. Um, What that means is uh, um, from the CDC recommendation, he's going to have to be away from the team for at least five days. So there's still a quarantine or or a period where he's going to have to uh, stay home for five days. After that, if he feels well, he, he can come back and he's fine. So essentially, it's the same as what we saw last year. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think this is a big deal. He's gonna, yeah. he's he's gonna miss a few days. Of, and actually, I think of the five days, there's a players off days. There's a there's a prep day or a walkthrough day on Saturday, right, where they're not really doing much. Yep, and, and then, then there's a Sunday's game on a Sunday, game which, in which he's not gonna play anyways. And then there's exactly. a Monday day off. So it's it's exactly it's actually a great time to catch COVID and kick your feet up and get a little rest about three weeks into camp. So I actually think this is a good thing for Kirk. He gets to rest up, rest his mind, rest his body. Hopefully he yep. doesn't have a one oh four fever or something crazy. Right. But you know, I think like to to the points you've been making, um, just in your observations the last couple of days on Twitter and whatnot. This only highlights even more, hey, guys, if this does happen in the regular season, whether it's illness or whether it's a rare injury to Kirk, it just continues to highlight the lack of experience and competence behind Kirk Cousins at that position. Yes. But they, but they already knew that before he got sick. And, and now I know Kevin Seifert floated the report yesterday that the Vikings are open for conversation with other teams that might want to... Uh, offer up a quarterback via trade. So mm-hmm. I guess the way he phrased it was they're open to the idea that the backup quarterback is not currently on the roster. And I think that was known before Kirk got sick, but it's highlighted more right now. And I, I think what you said is right. I think for the first uh, preseason game on Sunday in Vegas, I don't think Kirk was going to play. A- and again, as we've discussed, I think that there's a fighting chance Kirk and guys like Jefferson, Thielen, Cook go down that list of people that they don't play in any of the three games. So, yes, this is not like, a, oh, my God, Kirk's going to miss the first opportunity to really prepare with this team. That's not true. So, yeah, and and Camp Note 2 is exactly what you just brought up as well, which is this. If it was not readily apparent to the Vikings brass, I'm talking from Quasi to O'Connell on down, that this team has to go get a backup QB, it is now. Yesterday was a disaster. 
Yesterday was a complete disaster. Mannion completed some decent passes to Jefferson, but it was a gong show. And let me let me compare this, Phil, because this will this will send off bells and whistles in your head when I, I say gong show. I know where this, you're going. This this <laughs> was the 2009 training camp practice when they said we've got to go get Brett Favre with Sage and Tavares skipping balls off the grass. Would you rather have? Hold on a second here. How old is Brett Favre now? I'd rather have Brett like Favre. Fifty. Would you rather have a? Let's yes. see. Fifty. I just want to yes. verify his age. You can stop right now. Yes. <laughs> Would you rather have a fifty-two? He's going to be fifty-three on October tenth. Brett Favre, if given you know a few weeks as a backup. Yes. Or Kellen Mond. Sean Mayer. It's not close. <laughs> Right, I will take the old man. Probably Brett Favre. You're taking Brett Favre. I'll take Brett too. I'll Copper take Brett Favre too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wrangler um, jeans, copper fit, give me it all. Make the call. Would you? Would you pay him a million dollars? Well, I mean, you have to. It's a veteran. Veterans minimum is like a. Isn't like a million dollars or something like that. Sure. Yes, I'll give him a million dollars. Like I need. I. This. The, it, this sounds crazy, and I continue to say it. And and I've gotten to the point now where I'm told that's actually not crazy, but I continue to say this. I would rather call Blake Bortles off his couch and have Blake, who who was in the system twice with the Rams. Um, he was with them in 2019, and I think they brought him back because of injury in 2020 when O'Connell was there briefly. Uh, but the point is he knows the system, and I think he can at least function. This is unfunctionable. Like I, I don't know how much more, unless you were there at the practice, this isn't a question of, oh, come on, it'll be fine. If that, No, this is not a functional situation. And Mannion knows what he wants to do, and he can't do it. Mon doesn't yet know what he wants to do, and it takes so much time to process. Like, everything that we've been talking about now for the better part of two weeks on occasion um, was there in broad daylight for everyone to see yesterday with both of those guys splitting reps with the first team it is if anything it's going to sound incredible it's worse than i thought okay maybe i'm gonna i'm gonna take one step back on my on my brett Favre thing here because when you google brett Favre's name the latest headline on profootballtalk.com from yesterday is brett Favre believes he suffered thousands of concussions in the nfl yeah hmm. i read that yeah sounds right he appeared on the bubba army uh i'm guessing that's bubba the love sponge radio show on Sirius XM and he said Con concussions happen all the time you get tackled and your head hits the turf you see flashes of light or ringing in your ears but you're still able to play that's a concussion so based on how many times that has happened he said thousands has to be because every time my head hit the turf there was ringing or stars going and flash bulbs but I was still able to play wow yeah, you know what Jesus you know what? He's Brett Favre. Of course and, he was. Yeah. Of course so, he was. Somebody might want to check on Brett Favre. Actually, I le I'm legitimately. Oh yeah. Have you ever seen, seen that guy on like TV interviews recently yeah. in the last few years? It slowed down. It's scary. And, and it wasn't. It wasn't quick 15 years ago. But it's it definitely. Was, it was. It wasn't quick, but it was a sort of savvy. Sort of. Yeah. No, I agree completely. So anyway, let me just demonstrate. I I would like to bring to, to use since the majority of of folks can't get to training camp practice that's why i'm there i would like to bring to you a couple of series run by these two quarterbacks on thursday okay are these from the from the notebook here yes yes i've got them transcribed here oh they're on the they're wow. on the phone the phone notes. they're on the okay. phone they were in the the notebook it was i thought it was going to be so bad that i actually kept play by play of the team drills <laughs> What an ambulance so like, chaser. Like right there, okay? Play-by-play play of the team drills. I love it. So, but I would just want to bring, so like when I'm talking about this, and I'm sure folks are like, oh, Judge, you're overblowing it. It can't be that bad. Like you're just, you're generalizing. No, I got play-by-play, play and I want to bring you a couple of series just to give you a taste of the ineptitude I saw, okay? Okay. All right. So, Mannion started the team drills with the first team, which leads me to believe he's going to get the start. Sunday, which is fine. They're both going to play a ton. Keep in mind, there's no fourth quarterback in this camp. All right. Mannion's first series. First, so two run plays, and then he starts to throw the ball. A tip pass at the line of scrimmage. Could have been picked. It sounds wasn't. Like, it sounds like great defense by Harrison Phillips to me. <laughs> next pass by Mannion. Very next play. Tries to throw a short pass that Cam 
Bynum drops. Only problem is Cam Bynum's a safety. So he essentially. So it sounds to me like Cam Bynum correctly yep. jumped a route. Another sign yep. of great defense. Yeah, to come. I don't know what you're talking about. Defense yep. sounds great. Okay, next one. Zadarius Smith gets pressure. Mannion, yeah. in a panic, spikes the ball. Again, well, I, I, don't, I don't see opponents scoring double-digit points on this defense. And then finally we did get, and this is the great bailout in life, a completion to Justin Jefferson because he is the one guy who you can, when all hell is breaking loose, just say, screw it, here's the ball, take it. Yeah, I mean, look at some of the, the quarterbacks in history that have built you know, built a, at least a season's worth of good resume and tape off. Randy Moss, for instance, right? Exactly. You, like Jeff George, you dust off Jeff George and Randall Cunningham from retirement, and they look like MVP. So, yeah, I think if you're Sean Mannion or, or Kellen Mond and you're struggling at practice, just find Justin Jefferson, and yes. things will be a little bit better. Kellen mm. Mond. Kellen Mond, throughout the course of, of the drills that he got with both the first and second team, was sacked a total of... Or if they blew the whistle, would have been sacked four times. And here's the problem. They weren't all on the offensive line. This goes back to he is holding the ball. He is thinking, thinking, thinking. And guess what? Do you know when you realize how good professional athletes are and how quick their game moves? When bad players get to participate. Because <laughs> like, if it's a good player, right, in, in hockey... Puck goes back to the point. Defenseman makes a great play. Of course he did, right? But then you get a guy on defense who's not that good. And, oh, my God, the speed. He's just been basically stripped of the puck. Same thing in football with quarterbacks. And so, like, when you watch Mond trying to think, 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 and operate, and th and these guys are, like, going bang, 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 bang. It is incredible how quickly you pick up on exactly how difficult uh, the job is and how easy the good ones make the job look. So... But Mond, uh, oh, and Mond, in, in a drill that started with 50 seconds left on the clock, okay, um, Kellen Mond did complete a pass on, I think it was fourth down to keep the drive alive and then allowed 18 seconds to go off the clock. Wait, so the, so, okay, I'll explain this then. So they have clock okay. running, it's a so live, live two-minute li drill. It's okay. live, it's live, okay. So on third or fourth down, Mond does, to his credit, complete a pass to keep the Keep the drive going. So it's but, a first down. It's first down. So it's a first down. So you got to go, 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 right? Spike the ball. 18 seconds go off the clock. So it took him 18 seconds to get everyone lined up, organized, and then spike the ball. And how long it, was the completion? Um, I'm going to guesstimate it was 15 yards. Okay. So it wasn't 40 yards down the field. Everyone's got to run and all Right. That. No, okay. no, no, it wasn't. There, there was... I believe between Mannion and Mond, they attempted once one real deep pass. It was by Mond, and it was into double coverage and got broken up. Yeah, and I'm try again. I'm trying to balance as I hear these largely disappointing Kellen Mond updates. Okay, it's a new system for everybody. He really, this is really, it's his second year in the NFL, but the first year was almost a wash for so many different reasons. You know, think about the two-minute drill thing, for instance. The starters under Mike Zimmer and Clint Kubiak had trouble sometimes getting organized at time. Who's going to call a timeout? Now, they did have some moments, like two or three. There was the first Lions game where they were actually excellent in the two-minute drill down the stretch. But it's not like you would look back at Mike Zimmer's eight years and, and the Kirk Cousins, Mike Zimmer, Clint Kubiak trio and say, boy, that is a well-oiled machine when it comes to clock management, time efficiency, timeouts, everything. And so I'm trying to be patient with Kellen Mond to a point, but at the same time, dude, the train doesn't stop rolling. And I think almost certainly they're going to trade for somebody here once you get a couple preseason games. I don't know if they're going to – they might have to wait till after the third preseason game and final cuts, though, because teams aren't just – unless you blow a team away with an offer, teams need quarterbacks in camp. They need quarterbacks to play in these preseason games and run their offenses. So sure. you, you might have to wait three weeks before you actually bring – a new quarterback in as a backup. And to Judd's point, I, I like I know Blake Bortles knows the system, but Blake Bortles has also been sitting on his butt for the last year and a half. So I I, I wouldn't say Blake Bortles stepping in is instantly better than Kellen Mond. I know Sean Mann and Kellen Mond is a low bar to clear, but at least I think Judd's point is bring him in for a workout and see if he's more competent than these two. Because like I Blake Bortles doesn't do a whole lot for me. I know he knows the system that's all good and gravy. But I think they do have to find a legitimate backup guy who has recent NFL experience before I'm turning in 
to pick up a guy off his couch. Yeah, you can you can smell the desperation on yeah. our bodies and breath as we pine for Blake uh, Bortles to be wearing ooh. a Vikings uniform ooh. because boy, if Kirk goes down, you'd want Blake Bortles captain. I know that's what I keep saying. The ship. It sounds crazy. But the difference, I think the biggest thing is and this is a really low bar, Blake Bortles has at least started what 70, 75 NFL games. So when it comes yep. to cuz we're talking about basic things with Kellen Mond here, like getting used to the speed of the game getting used to processing things at an NFL level. Now, you could argue it's not like Blake was exactly processing things at an elite level, but he was good enough to sort of manage a team to an NFC Championship game one time. We've brought up the numbers, the 4,000 yards passing. So, yes, just based on desperation, 10 times out of 10, I would take Blake Bortles with some experience in this system two years ago. And uh, and listen, Dex, you're being too hard here. He wasn't just sitting on his butt. He was part of the Packers and the Saints organizations last year. Did not play in a game, but at least he was around. You know, he's. I think he was. Wasn't he on on, on the Saints regular season roster, or did they cut him before the season last they year? They cut him before the season, but but the Saints. No, like oh, they seven signed different him. Different quarterbacks last year. The Packers cut him before. No, he was elevated to the Packers on November 6th to the active roster for a game against Kansas City, then released on November 15th. So he was cut during training camp or before training camp when Rodgers finally settled with the Packers. Mm. And then they so they brought him back after not being at camp on November 4th. He stuck around for a couple weeks, and then the Saints signed him on December 24th to be a backup. So he just, just kind of like spent... A few scattered weeks at practice with those two teams. So, all right. So Declan's right. He was sitting on his ass. Too all hard. right. So, so that's the the um, concerning backup QB news. I, I think we all agree that uh, hopefully Kirk is absolutely fine and will be back next week. Uh, but I want to get to the good news of yesterday's practice, which is how it came to a conclusion. And this continues to be a pattern, but it's a good one. Uh, so with the unfortunate late game drill not having worked as desired, they had um, a Greg Joseph attempt a field goal from midfield. And I'm not being general about this. I'm not saying hey, it was about the 48 or is No, it was the 50-yard line. He was standing. He was The ball was spotted on the 50-yard line. He not only made the kick, but there was probably 8 to 10 yards to spare on said kick. Wow. It was perfect. It was perfect. And look, I know it's training camp practices, but when kickers miss, we, we don't say, well, that's nothing. Like we've thought, oh boy, that guy missed a you know training camp field goal attempt. So I'm going to continue to harp on the fact until he proves me wrong that Greg Joseph, one, has been great in camp, but two, when you are making field goals like that look easy, I think it's worth being optimistic about what type of year this guy might be in for because it feels like it's a long it's been a long time since we uh went into a viking season feeling really good about their kicker and i and i would say too that we've seen kickers i mean blair walsh his rookie season was 10 for 10 from 50 yards yep. in the regular season not at training camp and he also looked really good at training camp that year so i think it's it's going to be less about what what is greg joseph capable of and we and it's it's great that he's capable of 60 yarders and that's a that's that's more like you know Kai Forbath wasn't kicking sixty yarders, so tap into the upside. But to me, I think the most important thing is if and when he starts to struggle a little bit, he has a game where he misses a couple field goals. How is he then treated by the coaching staff? How are they managing? You know, he's he's basically a golfer with cleats and some shoulder pads. So if if in the middle of a round he starts pushing the ball out over the trees to the right. Does the does the caddy and the golf instructor come up and berate him and trash him to the media and or or is there some sort of support system that can get him back on track very quickly? You know, Mike Zimmer's impatience was legendary with kickers, and right. I think Kevin O'Connell is tracking the other direction. So I'm curious to see. I don't, I don't. I would not like to see him melt down. But if he misses a couple kicks in week two, on Monday night against the Eagles, what is the sort of support system to get him? back on track you know got to treat him differently than your left guard who might get burned a few times it will be extremely positive i guarantee it it will be extremely that's one thing that's going to change for sure um they will be i think they're i'm not trying to say that this coaching staff is not going to criticize and get on players but i think it's going to be with positive 
reinforcement, which right now, that's important because I think we are, like it or not, we're in a day and age with athletes where I don't think for the most part yelling and screaming and melting down works well. I think, I think a lot of guys, I think the majority of athletes today rebel against that, and it actually causes more problems than good. I think mm-hmm. if it's positive reinforcement, that might come loudly. But I think if it's positive and focused on, okay, here's what we're going to do to fix it, I think you're going to, I think you're going to get a far better response from professional a- athletes in 2022 on down than basically Becoming upset, but offering no solutions to them. Yeah, there's a group of us millennials. Declan, are you a millennial or are you Gen Z? I'm millennial. I'm at the end, but I'm a millennial. So I'm an I'm an older millennial. Declan yep. is a, is a younger millennial, and then, and then Gen Z is even younger than us. And we just we don't like to be yelled at. You know? nope. We don't like to nope. be scolded. Just let's just Military have a not let, for me. Let, yeah, let's have a conversation. Let's have a a, a nice tactful yeah. conversation so that you don't hurt our fragile feelings mm-hmm. and positive reinforcement. Yep, lots of, lots, lots of it. Lots of it. Yep, need Just it. So See, prop up our about. prop yep. up our insecurities. Please. A, mm-hmm. <laughs> Please. <laughs> all right. Speak, hold on. Speaking of great yeah. partnerships and oh, support, there, all right? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. When you are in the market to sell your house, our friends at Equity Partners, and by the way, Ryan, one of the co-owners of Equity Partners, he is a, a former guest on Write That Down, huge Vikings fan, and so if you partner with these guys, they will help make the house selling process 100% hassle-free. Part of it is their We Have program, which helps you build value on your home. They'll help remodel your home or simple fixes. Whatever, whatever the fixes need to be, they will implement them to boost the value of your home. And this might be the biggest benefit. Uh, no dealing with showings. No dealing with all of the sort of staging showings hassle. And you can put offers in on your next home, non-contingent on the sale of your current home, which is obviously huge. So check them out. If you're thinking about selling your home and you're just a little overwhelmed by the potential process, equitypartnersmn.com or 612-999-2244. 612-999-2244. I'm up in the Brainerd area in Nisswa here all week for some company meetings and Mm -hmm. I wish I had some time this weekend to stick around going to a wedding in Milwaukee, just bouncing all over the... But I, if I had some time, I might go check out Brainerd International Raceway because I keep hearing good things from Declan. Yeah, you should just you should just hop in your own little drag racing car, go 330 miles per hour right to Milwaukee. <laughs> Actually, don't, Phil. Please don't do that. We need this show, and we would like you to be safe. But uh, at Brainerd International Raceway, that's where you're going to get 330 miles per hour of heart-pumping adrenaline at the Lucas Oil Nationals. Tickets uh, and camping information at BIR mn.com it's the fastest show on earth brand international raceway the 40th annual lucas oil nationals get your tickets now b-i-r-m-n.com boom all right sorry to interrupt judd's camp notes there oh no worries no worries great partners on this show yes please support our partners you can support us by supporting our partners all right judd back to you all right i'm going to conclude uh today's camp notes with two things to watch for on sunday two brewing battles developing in progress one is i think new one is one we, we've been talking about for a few days now but i want to bring the new one to light uh because i saw something yesterday that i didn't see coming it, it surprised me and i believe it's the first time i have seen it with everybody at full strength okay um first team some of the reps right cornerback went to andrew booth jr ahead of Cam Dantzler. Interesting. Now, Dantzler mixed back in, so he's not... I don't think there's a doghouse here. I don't think... Like, I think it's just a competition. I don't think there's a, there's there's something underneath the surface that I'm missing here. But you know what? They both played pretty well. Um, Booth is a second-round pick. And, you know, the thing, too, is... And I think this is where it's so different from Mike, where I have to get used to it. If you're a first or second round or perhaps a third round pick, right? Like I become conditioned to, well, you're not going to play that that much, especially, you know, first round picks do, I guess, with Mike a bit. But after that, it's like, well, it's a rookie. This guy has to learn. And so um, there's a definite there's a definite shift in philosophy and there should be. So I find it intriguing that 
at least for some of the first team reps on Thursday during the team drills of practice. Andrew Booth Jr. was at right corner in place of Dantzler, and then they switched off at different times. But that's one I, I think that is uh, worth certainly keeping an eye on Sunday. I'm sure they will both play, and it looks like it might be a competition. Interesting. And this isn't necessarily, like you said, an indictment on Cam Dantzler's performance in camp because it sounds like, by all accounts, he's been – pretty damn good actually in camp right yeah yeah they 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 have both had good days yeah they both had good days and, and they wouldn't had... they wouldn't dare put peterson in the competition here's no, the tricky they're thing not going to do that. it's i don't think we're there yet but it's possible that at some point here the young guys cam dantzler and booth uh-huh. could just be better than patrick peterson and they would then have to make a decision okay is this worth because when once you make that move I mean, I think Patrick Peterson would handle it okay, but you never know. But that's kind of a kind of a nuclear option. You would just be moving on from Patrick Peterson as a as a veteran starter. Yes. But there, but that that's to, to what you've seen. Peterson's spot is ironclad, right? They're not. Yes, he's yeah, going to start the season as a starting outside cornerback. Yes, he is. Yes, okay. and, and he should. Uh, but yeah, I I like the fact that they're staging a competition here. Uh, my guess is Dantzler wins it, but I think the good thing is. The perception internally, probably rightfully so, is is Booth is going to continue to, to take steps here. So the fact that there's a competition there, I think, is a good thing. Like, yeah. it's not like, a, well, Dantzler might not be good. No, it's it's good. And I also like the fact, again, that high draft picks, not just first round picks, are being given chances. Because, like, it, it became ridiculous that we were conditioned to, well, that guy's probably not go- going to play. Well, why? Well, because he, you know, Mike de- Mike doesn't play those guys. Well, yeah. that doesn't really make a ton of sense if you're a first, second, or even third round pick. Yeah, and uh, those clocks churn quickly in the NFL. You're not even you're not even guaranteed a guy stays healthy. So the rookie scale contract of four or five years, depending on the round that they were in, start taking advantage the minute that they show they're ready. So I, I kind of love this. And if you start to look ahead, if if Booth, if they hit on Booth. And if they hit on Lewis Seen, I think they've already hit on Cam Dantzler and Cam Bynum to some extent. It's a lot easier to lose Harrison Smith in his mid-30s, one of your yes. highest paid players, and Patrick Peterson. This is probably his last year as a Viking. Mm-hmm. So when you start to look at the horizon beyond 2022, and you can see maybe a 2023-24 situation where you've got two young players at safety, two young players as starting outside cornerbacks, all of them on rookie scale contracts, so you're not you're not paying twelve million dollars for a safety anymore. I mean, eventually, if if you know, Cam Bynum will be going into his third fourth year, eventually, if if you want to keep those guys around, you have to pay them. But it right it it, it makes it a lot easier to uh, to build out the rest of your team and to fill a couple holes here and there. If you've got four starting secondary players, all very good, mm-hmm. and all making rookie scale money. Off that point, Phil, I have a feeling that Quazy's magical formula probably is going to churn safeties, and it probably should. So, like, I, I would be – if Booth and Dantzler thrive, I think they probably eventually get paid. Um, my guess is that the rule of thumb with executives who look at things like Quazy is going to and does – my guess is running backs, safeties, linebackers, not the outside guys who rush, but the inside guys – uh, we're going to see a very different philosophy of who to extend, especially yeah. at, at a big price, not necessarily just based on player, but probably more importantly now based on position. And I don't know if this team has ever taken that formula before to its fruition. No, they've they've done the opposite. Right. <laughs> they but I'm trying to think if there's so ever been a time those positions. where they're like, you know what? A safety is incredibly important, but we can find them. I'm trying to think. I think there was a... I was gonna say like the early two thousands they 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 sort of they rotated running backs, but they also spent a first round pick on uh, Michael Bennett in two thousand one or two thousand two. So they've either been paying running backs a lot of money, mm-hmm. or they've been using first round picks on running backs or both. I mean, hell, go back to Robert Smith had a pretty big contract, so it's probably been twenty five thirty, and then Terry Allen before him. Yeah. So they've they've never really gone a five or six year stretch saying you know what we're gonna just kind of. Let's go find some guys in the fourth and fifth round and not pay them a lot of money. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, let's get to the second position battle here. Uh, yes, right guard. So it, it continues 
to be, ba I think right now it's a 50-50 rotation. Ingram, the rookie, and, and Davis, the veteran. Um, and I've now taken to saying this. I, I think there's a very good chance that for the first game against the Packers, September 11th, Ed Ingram is starting. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I mean, they are rotating now so much. Ingram is, he is the solution there. Like it might not be the first game, but it might be. Uh, but I think this team would like to, and rightfully so, get an offensive line that aside from the center, I think if you put this line together with Ingram playing right guard for the opener, you're talking about four of the five spots being solidified potentially long term. And, and the one thing, and this is the thing, this is another thing about the offensive line that's driven me crazy, is guys are going to get hurt, okay? But if you can do it, what's one of the most important things an offensive line can have? Continuity. So, like, when you're constantly switching your guard, you know, yeah, right guard, we'll go get this guy. No, let's go get that guy. You know, you're constantly putting a new person into a scheme that works very much as a team. So... I think the smart play is how can we possibly get as much of this line together and, and the tackles are set. Cleveland set at left guard. So at least if you can get Ingram in at right guard, now four of those five spots are your desired long-term solutions for what has been a long-term problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, I, I think it's like 16 different starting left and right guards since 2016. Yeah. Since since Joe Berger was a rock solid right guard for this team, right, and I'm including both guard positions in that tally, but it's incredible. And by the way, they had some continuity. Oli Udo played almost all the games last year. What more continuity do you want? Backup he tackle, pretty now. much all the games. <laughs> uh, he's going to make the roster. Backup tackle, swing guy, go Oli. <laughs> I don't know if you can bet over unders on uh, on guard play, but uh, Declan, you tell us when it comes to fantasy. Yeah, underdog fantasy is where it's at. And now, so now the pick 'em options are out. I saw Malik Willis out there yesterday, and uh, he had an over under, and oh, yeah, yeah, hammered that over. That was nope. The first play of the game was a 50 yard just bomb down oh. the field. So you already got over unders coming in for underdog fantasy. You got the puppy coming out, which is great. It's just a five dollar entry with over two million dollars in, in cash out prizes available. It's kind of an interesting setup. You draft your players. If you want to draft, let's say, hey, you want to draft two to three quarterbacks because you want the best possible quarterback. Underdog will just start that best potential quarterback for you. They don't have to worry about waking up on time or checking Shefty's tweets at the last possible minute. I like to sleep in on Sundays. I like to, I always miss those announcements. Underdog Fantasy takes care of that for me. Download now the Underdog Fantasy app and mat, they'll match your first deposit up to $100 for potential pick em options and fantasy drafts. Underdog Fantasy, go download the Underdog Fantasy app. All right, guys, those are Judd's camp notes here on this Friday episode of Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. And if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button. We are almost to, I think, 27,000 subs oh, yeah. on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. So thank you for helping us uh, get to almost 27,000 subscribers. If you haven't already clicked subscribe, click that subscribe button, the like button, help spread the word about this community of Vikings fans that we are uh, trying to cultivate here. So uh, the season is less than a month away, and we have actual games to react to here, even uh -oh. if it's mostly backups starting this weekend. We are excited. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment.